Today, I would like to talk about uh, economic data because when we invest in the stock market, sometimes we didn't really focus on the macro view of the economy and then rather we focus too much on the individual stocks. And then sometimes um, when we need to refer to the macro view, right, it is more important because it gives you an overall view of the economy, whether the economy is doing well or whether the economy is heading into a recession. So all this economic data is very important as a stock investor. So um, today I will go through the basic economic data, um, go through the basic uh, economic data and then let you have a look at what are their meaning. These are the um, economic data that always appear in the newspaper that you must know. So the first one is the inflation rate. So in general, inflation rate refers to the price level of a, uh, of a country. So if let's say there's inflation, it means that the general price level is rising. And this one can be measured by CPI, Consumer Price Index. So this consumer price index measure the general price level of a country. So what kind, what level of consumer price index is uh, reasonable? Usually we are looking at 3%. So in an economy, in a country, it is best that we keep the inflation rate below 3%. Then we will see that, okay, this country is managing their price level quite well. So if let's say we see that a country has an inflation rate of about 5%, so then we'll there's a sign of alarming so that means this country may be running into inflation and then maybe the the cost of living will increase and then if that's the case maybe um, the the cost of uh, doing business will also increase okay and um, the next one that I want to talk about is interest rate interest rate is um, something to do with the cost of borrowing so when you um, when you need to, uh, company need to expand, they need to borrow money for expansion. So if the interest rate is high, so that's not a good um, news for the company because it means that their cost of borrowing is high. So that means their profit margin will be squeezed. So therefore, um, in a low interest rate environment like what we are having now, is actually quite conducive for the business in Malaysia. So we would like to see interest rate low but not as low as 0% or 1% because that is too low. So what was happening was that um, in the US because they want to um, increase their unemployment, uh, I mean uh, to increase their employment rate, they reduced their interest rate to a very very low level almost like 0%. And uh, the the bad things about uh, having a very low interest rate is that when you need to have in the future, when you need to use interest rate as a policy to um, expand the economy or to stimulate the economy, but your interest rate is already so low, there's no room for you to lower the interest rate anymore. And then so therefore, you wouldn't have the, the monetary policy wouldn't have any effect to stimulate the economy anymore. So we cannot um, keep the interest rate too low for too long uh, a time period. We must make it like a reasonable, about 3% is reasonable. And then if there is any recession or any economic slowdown, the government can reduce the interest rate to a lower level so that to stimulate the economy. So we wouldn't want to see uh, interest rate to be already that low. And then if you want to stimulate the economy, there's no way you can reduce the interest rate anymore. And then the next economic indicator is called the gross domestic product, which is the GDP. So G this GDP uh, is a very common name that you always see in the newspaper. So whenever we see that the GDP uh, is rising, which is a good sign, that means the economy is um, growing and that is good. So how much is the GDP that is appropriate? So different countries will have a different um, uh, diff sets of uh, GDP numbers. So for example, for Malaysia, our normal healthy growth rate is about 5%. Okay, four to, between 4 to 5%. So if we are running around uh, 6%, which means we are doing very well. So however, if let's say we are running about 3%, 2%, which that means that our economy is slowing down. But however, this 2%, 3% may mean good in other countries, for example, in the US. So if you look at US GDP, um, when you look at their GDP, if they can achieve like 2%, 3%, that's very good. 
because their economy is already that big. It's a developed country. It's already that big. So their base is very big. So in order to reach that 2 3% is already something, uh, 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 an achievement for them. So if they can uh, maintain 2 to 3% for a year of GDP growth, that is a great news for the US market. So, um, so, so that will explain why um, different GDP will have a different growth rate. And in China, the norm may be 6 to 8%. That's a norm for China market. Okay. Now, the next one is unemployment rate. Now, in Malaysia, the unemployment rate is not a concern. It's because for the past 20 years, our unemployment rate is, has been very low. It's about um, less than 3%. It's, that's very low. So it's not a concern. However, in the US and the European country, unemployment rate is always a concern because their unemployment rate can be as high as double digit. Okay, that means more than 10%. And so what does that mean? So when you have unemployment rate of more than 10%, so it means that a lot of people are out of job. They cannot find a job. So that means the economy is not doing well. So in order to reduce this unemployment rate, the country definitely have to stimulate the economy and this is exactly what the US was doing because after the 20, 2008 and the 2009 the, um, financial crisis, the US unemployment rate was double digit at that time. So in order to bring down the unemployment rate, so they deliberately reduce the interest rate. They reduce the interest rate um, such that they want to stimulate the economy. So over the years, the interest rate was reduced from 6% to zero, almost 0%. Zero and then the unemployment rate was brought down from double digit to single digit of about 4%. So um, which mean, which is good because um, for the US economy, when they reduce the interest rate, it was successful in the sense that they helped to increase and stimulate the economy and increase the employment level there. Now let's take a look at this um, economic data website. It's called Trading Economics. And um, this is a very useful website for all investors and traders. Um, if you were to type Trading Economics in your Google, and then they will bring you to this website. So this is the homepage of this um, Trading Economics. And then you can see you can compare across all the various countries their economic data at one glance on this homepage. And these are the major indicators that you can that we all see from our newspaper and then um, from the websites or whatever. So you can see that you have GDP data year on year, quarter on quarter. The difference, what's the difference between year on year and quarter on quarter? So year on year means that you are comparing, um, for example, this, uh, this month, um, 2018, and then you compare to the previous year, the same month. So that means you are comparing um, the same month of um, this year and the previous year. So this is year on year. And then the GDP quarter on quarter means that you're comparing this quarter and then to last quarter. So then you have uh, all this um, interest rate, inflation rate. So if you want to compare the interest rate across a country, you can just look at this interest rate and then you just scroll down. And then you can see that which country has the highest interest rate and which country has the lowest interest rate from from here you can see at a glance and uh, inflation rate as well okay so there's this country has such a high inflation rate so that's Venezuela so these are the countries that uh, investors would like to avoid because um, you wouldn't want to see a country where the inflation rate is like thousands over percent and then um, so this is very interesting so you have the population figures here as well okay then um, let's take a look at Malaysia, okay? Because um, we usually look for Malaysia for our economic data, and you can see that um, we have a lot more data here. Besides the GDP, unemployment, inflation, interest rate, and all these uh, the the normal economic data, we also have the stock market figures, the the government bond, and then we have our um, job vacancies, minimum wage, um, our retirement age, our prices. Then we also have the CPI, and uh, which is the inflation rate. The CPI stands for Consumer Price Index, which is the inflation rate. And then we have the money supply, 
and then um, there's a whole list of this economic data you can look for all kinds of information about a country we have the external debt how much external debt we have the gold reserve the crude oil production the foreign direct investment the tourism or what no it's a terrorism index this is interesting and uh, there's a terrorism index here and then we have the um, the car registrations because um, in a country where you see that a lot of people buying cars it means the economy is doing well so in a uh, good uh, growing economy we should see the car registrations increasing so we can see all this list the list is uh, very extensive okay the sales tax rate and then the corporate tax rate the taxes so housing index retail sales year on year month on month so um, gasoline uh, prices the bank lending rate consumer confidence index so all these are very extensive if you have time you really have to explore um, each of these um, economic data to find out more about a country's um, financial status so now well, we just click into one of it which is our GDP figure so we click our GDP there's two one is a uh, quarter to quarter growth rate and then one is a annual growth rate so let's take a look at the annual growth rate you can see this is uh, over the year we can see that um, every quarter there's an announcement of this um, GDP growth rate so we are comparing um, this quarter to the last year's quarter so for example this 5.4 figure in this quarter will be exactly uh, compared to the uh, last year's the same quarter okay so we can see that our annual growth rate is um, the the highest was about uh, 6.2 that was last year now our GDP growth rate has actually slowed down and then we are coming down to 5.4 but as long as we are maintaining above uh, 4.5 and above I think our economy is doing well okay so then we can um, let's look for another one the stock market because I always come to this uh, stock market because to look for the historical data the interesting part is this historical data and then you can if you do click max and then you can see all the way to 1977 that was the first year where our, we had our KLCI index at 100 points so and you can see over the years we our stock market has increased from 100 points to 1700 points so over the years um, the stock market the, uh, the, the trend is on an up, uprising trend which means that if you to buy and hold in the long run, you are supposed to increase your 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 share value in in years to come. Okay, so this is a very comprehensive um, economic data website that um, I hope you will spend more time to um, explore. Okay, thank you.